Thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador Jain Prasad, special thanks to you for uh, having me here. Uh, I come here today uh, from uh, the northeast of India, uh, which we are talking about, was alluded to in the last presentation. Uh, but I come here more as an activist uh, of the ground um, for the people of the region uh, for whom uh, connectivity is a matter of daily importance. <coughs> where borders are much nearer <coughs> than where, where, where we are here now in Delhi. <coughs> uh, <coughs> the focus of my uh, pres presentation here will be on connectivity in, in East and South Asia and uh, with focus on the Northeast and uh, that's why I've sort of uh, made my boundaries clear on where we are not <coughs> going to go beyond. Uh, this is essentially the uh, geographically the basins uh, shaped by the Ganga, Brahmaputra and Meghna rivers, uh, which is a composite whole. Um, and uh, uh <coughs> in terms of spaces of engagement, uh, we've heard a lot about uh, the government led uh, in the political space. Uh, what has been happening. Because South Asia, uh, as, as uh, uh, the His Excellency from Afghanistan mentioned, we are one, there are so many similarities, but the politics is uh, what, uh, uh, you know, ch uh, changes and which has not unified us. So there are many initiatives in the governmental space um, <coughs> of, in, uh, of uh, connectivity, intelligence, border infrastructure. This has also been followed up by uh, by the big businesses actually, which I'll allude to. But what I would like to come here and talk about, uh, and which I think uh, uh, was also one of the themes of the presentation, I mean of the overall discourse today, was the people-led space, <coughs> which is led more by, by our emotions, you know. Um, and um, uh, there, there we carry a lot of emotional burden uh, from the Northeast, in the Northeast, there is a big psychological uh, issues there, and which I'd like to allude to. Um, and I think this, and I also use the word spiritual space, because um, not in, a, in the sense of religion, but more as a sense of finding our own, uh, own way forward as, as what we want out of uh, the, the, our, our individual destinies. Uh, how our geography shapes us, how our um, how our uh, how our uh, how we use our natural resources? How do we engage with our neighbors? What are the value systems with which we work together? Uh, how do we view our own lives uh, and the future, essentially? Um, so uh, these are questions, and these are great journeys coming up. Um, so I would like to allude to that space. Uh, and the Asian confluence is uh, an, uh, a, a very humble effort in that line to set up a, some kind of an institutional ability to, uh, to address these challenges, to address these questions. Um, well, we are in Delhi and I'll, uh, I'll take you on a short flight to Guwahati, where <laughs> uh, we are, uh, the uh, Guwahati is uh, the capital of Assam. Uh, it, is, it, is by, it is almost equidistant from, uh, as from Hanoi as from uh, and Mumbai, basically. So it's sort of in the center. And uh, uh, <coughs> You know, if I just look, tell you about, we're talking about people, uh, the annual um, number of tourists that uh, came into the Northeast region as compared to the average is much lower. So what I'm trying to allude to, therefore, is that there is very little known about the region, and that is uh, one of the problems. Um, last uh, week, I was in, uh, in Nepal. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of engagement between uh, Nepal and uh, and the Northeast. I mean, in uh, and the rest of uh, India in in terms of through Uttar Pradesh, but very little about the Northeast. The same holds true for Bangladesh, and the same holds true for Bhutan. So these are our immediate neighbors, and and Myanmar included. So uh, I think uh, it's a question, a case of very near yet very far, um, and that is an issue that has to be uh, addressed. Uh, I bring up the number of tourism because tourism is uh, is an indicator of a mind space. If people go, they they understand, they they learn, 
um, and if they don't then you know uh, this is a map of uh, 1860, uh, which was uh, 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 is a colonial map produced by the uh, by the uh, Johnson's company, uh, which uh, in which uh, this was of course a, a more uh, before partition in 1860, uh, way back uh, there was the Great Bengal Presidency, which uh, went all the way up till uh, up till Bengal. Uh, the present day Bangladesh even touched a bit of Myanmar. Uh, there was, um, and uh, they used to call, uh, culturally they used to call the rest of South Asia as, as, as farther India. So in that sense, uh, Northeast runs, uh, sits between uh, these two land, uh, you know, Hindustan and, and, and further India. That was the terminology that was used in uh, 1860. And at that time, Shillong, uh, was just uh, invested into as a as a as a learning capital of of the northeastern region, and many institutions came up. Calcutta was coming up as the capital. It used to be from where Singapore was ruled, um, and um, uh, Rangoon, Dhaka, Calcutta, uh, Shillong, they were all uh, part of an ecosystem which had access to the sea. Um, it had uh, it had uh, people coming and going. Uh, there were new institutions being formed. So, uh, if I may say so, that um, uh, being in the mid of these two Asias, um, the this region has um, influenced been influenced over time by migrations uh, from various genres of people. So, Indo-Aryans, the Austro-Asiatic races. Uh, people have come from the sea. The, there are a lot of Scottish and Portuguese people who have come. So it is in a, the, the Sino-Mongoloid uh, tra traits have come. So in a sense, it in in today's world, if we really look at Asia, uh, I would say that um, the northeast of India and its immediate neighbors together constitute uh, a really a biodiversity hotspot, human biodiversity hotspot. Or in in terms of say, you can say it is an Asian confluence. Uh, of, of various uh, various types of people, you know, um, we normally don't look at it that way uh, because uh, uh, after uh, the 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 partition, uh, when things uh, this natural contiguity was broken by unnatural political borders, uh, what was central became marginal, and uh, people after two three generations don't even realize that the kind of uh, opportunities that they are sitting on in terms of the, the amount of human diversity, the amount of biodiversity. Um, and uh, this is something I think that needs to come out in the public space. Um, <coughs> even earlier, this is a, a map I would just show because the Northeast uh, had also influences from the sea. Uh, because when uh, the Cholas uh, uh, you know, had the great kingdom, uh, there were many influences there in, in places like Manipur. So these are things as we raise the discourse on, on uh, uh, celebrating the region, on finding out new opportunities, new products in tourism, new literature, uh, new, new ideologies, uh, new icons to follow for each of the tribes that exist. These things become very important of revisiting history. Um, this was the first point I wanted to make. The second point I wanted to make is that the region is naturally connected by the many rivers. Uh, we lie at the cusp of uh, confluence of many rivers, it actually through which uh, the rivers flow. Bangladesh is a, a pretty much a riverine country, and for, for, for Northeast shares the longest borders with Bangladesh. So um, uh, this natural connect um, was once, uh, you know, uh, uh, of the GBM basin, if you can call it, was once connected. So uh, the fleet of country boats, uh, the Assam Bengal was connected. Uh, there were steamers floating. Um, and only after partition, these rivers became what we call transboundary rivers. Before, they were naturally flowing arteries of trade and commerce. And uh, again, when we talk of people today, they have simply forgotten about the rivers. So we are talking about building roads and uh, again connecting. But we seem to have forgotten that we are already connected. And even today, uh, during the floods, uh, the rivers, many of the rivers have, uh, have uh, not been uh, taken care of. 
so they have they need dredging as we heard and uh, there are big plans in the government now to uh, enable uh, riverine transport and inland waterways but even today uh, there are communities at the borders who trade uh, on uh, during flood seasons or or when uh, the there's a certain threshold in the water on on riverine routes there's a culture around rivers there are songs around rivers there are fairs around rivers um, uh, I can give you uh, one example of a fair which happens in Bangladesh, just on the border of Meghalaya and Bangladesh, uh, where every year they celebrate across all religions, across all um, uh, communities to uh, uh, a certain day when the river rises uh, during the rainy seasons and uh, they celebrate it with uh, different uh, means. Now these are not, not known in the public or even in the diplomatic uh, uh, narratives. And I think uh, what is needed is probably to highlight these and grow these institutions which have already existed. Mm. <coughs> Last year, um, uh, we did uh, what we called the Nadi festival. Uh, there was a poem made, uh, I'll read it out to you. You and I on two sides of the border, when we share a river, we share more than a border. We share the soil the river brings from one to the other. When we share a river, we speak to the other across the border. When we share a river, we share a culture. When we share a river, we share a stream of human history. When it is both yours and of the river, listen to the river. So can we start having a public discourse on listening to the geography rather than us, the politics dictating the geography? Um, I must tell you the success of this poem because we made this poem and uh, this was then given to different countries of Bangl different groups in Bangladesh, India, the different tribes in the Northeast, uh, in Bhutan, Nepal, to perform and to choreograph shows. And I can tell you the kind of imagination, the kind of enthusiasm uh, that is generated and the kind of goodwill that is generated on a contentious topic such as river sharing, including with Bangladesh, is, uh, was very, very encouraging. And I think we need to look into other ways and means of changing the public discourse and changing the mindset on how we look at our natural uh, resources, our natural geographies. Um, approach it maybe not from such a cerebral point of view, but more from a heart point of view, and have more of a give and take, because this is a shared destiny. Um, um, so th this was about the rivers. Uh, this was a policy dialogue we had on the sidelines. But it was back, it was a, it, the backdrop was culture, essentially. Um, and I must tell you that in Nepal and Bhutan, this policy dialogue received a lot of acclaim because it seemed to have uh, brought out some newer ideas which would, which normally don't uh, come up because we are sometimes stuck on certain words or certain themes or certain agendas, you know. Um, yeah. Um, um, okay, two minutes. Uh, so how do we exploit this uh, unique legacy? That is the question. I will not be very long. This is, uh, we consist of many states. Uh, each state has their own uh, sort of, um, uh, they are relatively new. So I just want to harp on one idea that there, there are many borders there. And uh, when we talk of, uh, of trade across these borders, there are two mechanisms right now in the region, which is uh, one is the land customs posts, which are about 20 in number, and the other are the border huts. The border huts were meant to promote people to people trade without much of you know bureaucratic or but when we visited the border huts uh, recently we found that the number the amount of goods that were being transmitted through the one it was small but also it was goods from our northern neighbor uh, so there was very little being produced in the region which is being exchanged and i think uh, that is a discourse which needs to change um, this is a, a a big project of uh, of the uh, 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 of a cement company which has the longest conveyor belt taking uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, by the uh, Lafarge company. Um, ending, I would like to say that we need a convergence of uh, three camps which exist as, it, as we view the region. One is the security uh, dimension. The whole region often has been looked at through a security prism. Um, and that's not wrong because there are so many borders. It's natural. But this needs to be balanced with or converge with the other views of a more equitable distribution of, uh, you know, more equitable development, distribution of local resources, generation of local 
um, uh, you know, talent and of course regional cooperation in the backdrop of BBIN. Um, BBIN of course is, is the cornerstone of, uh, of uh, uh, connectivity in the northeast. Uh, our immediate neighbors, Bhutan, Nepal and Bangladesh and I would extend it uh, to say that we would also like to engage with Myanmar because that is an area which is growing up though it's not part of the BBIN uh, discourse. Um, uh, this was something that we need to create uh, value chains across the borders. But um, what I would like to uh, uh, say here is that, uh, end with is that, um, uh, you know, the, end, the, the, the major thing is that governments are doing their jobs, the industries are moving forward, but what we need to cultivate is the people space. And therefore, uh, this is, the people must be understanding that there is interdependence, cooperation, these are values that need to be taken forward. And therefore, uh, we, I propose the following, and I will end with that, which is weaving a people's network. Uh, can, we, can we say that considering that the infrastructure is uh, done and border area facilitation is there, if we say that these are givens because these are not in the people space, they are governmental space which is being pushed and there is some security, there could be five areas of collaboration which, which could really, uh, as uh, Ambassador Jayant Prasad said, in the sequencing have low hanging fruits in the public goods, uh, regional public goods, the, the sequencing, five areas. Uh, tourism, culture, agro and forest products, bamboo is a very, very big uh, herbal medicines, um, educational services. Uh, there's a large number of pool of talent there of uh, English speaking, uh, good number of people who are very good educational institutions. And then based on these, can we form some regional networks? And for th to form these networks, we need uh, government to be a facilitator, a catalyst, but not to run the, run the mechanism. Uh, sharing of best practices, information campaigns, uh, uh, and entrepreneurs networks, uh, uh, skill grids. So some kind of an institutional capability if it is made, I think uh, there could be a lot of uh, way forward in terms of the uh, reinforcing the confidence that uh, the, the benefits of, of BBIN, the benefits of uh, BIMSTEC as it relates to the region of regional cooperation uh, can uh, be uh, people of the region can take participatory role in that and once that happens I think the other things will follow um, and uh, some some uh, uh, some few recommendations probably to facilitate that one more air connectivity two uh, more uh, exchange of the local stakeholders the the state level politicians with their immediate neighbors our state leaders don't know Bhutan, Nepal, many of them, it's, you know, the, because the discourse is more between uh, Delhi and Calcutta. Uh, more advocacy programs, regional festivals on, on, on BBIN, um, and uh, some involvement with um, getting to know Myanmar a little more, and some mechanism to fund these initiatives, maybe uh, a forum of a BBIN forum, much like the India-Bangladesh forum, where the ambassadors of the two countries uh, hold the, uh, uh, you know, the, the he they chair the organization, but the civil societies can actually participate in it. So uh, with that, uh, I hope that uh, I was able to convey some of the messages from the region. Thank you very much.